Okay, great. It's a pleasure to meet you, Minister Norman Hicks, and we are here at Franklin Park on Saturday. It's kind of a balmy out here, but uh, you have brought a large group of associates, and you guys are serving what looks like some good and tasty and healthy food. And I'd just like to thank you for your contributions and ask you, what is the mission of your, your church or organization? Well, first of all, we just believe that we can do better together and understanding that some people are just not in a position to really make it through life. So we kind of be a, a extension of God to show them that God's love is out there. We come out here to have the same compassion. We can't come to give them hope and to encourage them, uh, to not give them questions, not to look down to them, but just to let them know that there are some other people out there that's believing that they can make it. And wherever they at, we just a voice that they can, or show that they can lean on. So our mission is to go out just to encourage people that in spite of whatever situation that you're in, that you can make it. And sometimes we believe all it needs is somebody is a friend just to just to encourage you. So we just like to show the same love as God is and not to judge nobody from wherever they at. I understand that. So that's what our mission is. Okay. That's what we mean. But I want to ask you about something that's very interesting. I attended an event recently where we were talking about, I think it was Martha's Table, they were talking about distribution of food and how much food there really is in D.C. And there seems to be a lot of food that comes out here to uh, Franklin Park. It's more than about food, right? It's, it's about trying to understand what the concerns are and maybe help these folks towards a more of a positive path, a more productive path. How do you, are you able to do that at all? Do you think that there are certain people that you can work with in that way? Yes, it's, it's been several people that we have worked with and several people that we have helped uh, make it through life. Uh, I, I thought is that we'll walk with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever your need is, if you need some assistance, uh, something, whether somebody be in a mouthpiece or somebody to take you to help you get your paperwork done, somebody to help you do your resume, uh, all those things that will help you become productive in life. We want to be that umbrella mm -hmm. that, you know, that will be somebody that will be your brother's keeper, if I may say, that will walk along with you to help you make it because a lot of times you know we believe that you know they have sent in a sense lost their identity mm -hmm. they do not know who they are so we try to help them restore their identity and once you get your identity there's something that you can hold on and something you can build on and in a, in a sense they have lost that and we come to help them restore their identity so that's okay. what we do so we talk about identity and I like that I like that the theme of identity because number one one of the things that people need most is an ID card that's one thing yeah. right in order to just get into a space they have to have a valid ID uh, to be accepted or considered trustworthy so in terms of the process of identity you, you also talk about something spiritual so what, what exactly does that mean can you give an example of, of right. a person who lost well, their identity one of the foundations uh, created was, it's called Identity Plus. Mm -hmm. And Identity Plus is, is a spiritual thing that is a concept that we believe if we add Jesus to the situation, He's the only one that can make you whole. Mm -hmm. So it's your identity that each of us have that gives us our life and our being. But once you feel like you don't have an identity, you know, you feel less than. So we try to give you components that, like I said, the ID cards, mm -hmm. social security cards, uh, job placement things, mm -hmm. trying to work with the local uh, governments, with the uh, businesses and the residentials, that these people can feel like they on their own. Mm -hmm. So that's what Identity Plus is mean, is adding a conglomerate of bringing the churches to feed the person spiritually, mm -hmm. the government to help them economically, you know, because one, I believe they have tax breaks because today's economic time does not afford a person to uh, have a place on their own. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a, a, a connection between the churches, the government, and the business leaders. So can you give me a tangible example of, like for instance, I think you're addressing housing to some degree. Right, I am. Okay, so if someone is laying out, you know, on the sidewalk, and let's say that they're relatively cogent, they're able to communicate but let's say they've been involved in certain things, maybe drug dealing or maybe some illegal activities and they end up on the street. Have you been able to help anyone to find a place that they can stay? I mean, beyond a shelter. Yes. Okay. Some of them out here today. Okay. You know, some, some of the people that uh, 
uh, have help come back here because they know we have helped them and they come to say, hey, he helped me, he can help you. Mm -hmm. This organization, Greater St. John Church, mm -hmm. can be an organization that will be to help. Okay, so you guys are on, uh, hi there, you're on Marlboro Park, uh, a pike, it's uh, up in Marlboro, Maryland, in Prince George's County. Yes. And uh, do you have facilities out there? Sometimes people come out there, I assume, to worship, but do they, do they ever come out to you to talk to you about personal uh, enrichment in terms of, like you said, ID or about job placement or about just general emotional support? That sort yes, of thing. they do. Yes, they, they do come out and talk to them, and that's one of the things we don't want to force our belief mm -hmm. on you. But when we believe it's Jesus, you make a choice. Mm -hmm. So, on that perspective, we make, we, we put it out there mm -hmm. for them to say this is available to you. Mm -hmm. And then when you decide to make a choice, we'll be there right for you. Okay, you made a choice in terms of what? Spiritual Whatever, aspect? spiritual, mm -hmm. uh, physical, mm -hmm. choice is yours. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not here to force anything on you. Oh, I understand, you but so you do need to have some guidelines right. as to how you go about right. doing things. Right, so, so we let them know this is what we can help you do. It. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to have your ID. Uh, you don't have money to buy your ID. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, we'll provide you funds to get your ID. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need to go out here, you don't know how to read and write, you don't know how to get your birth certificate. Uh, that's, that's a different we'll, thing. We'll, we'll, we'll facilitate those type of means. But that's an educational thing. That's right. Right, so because that's going to restore the person's identity. That's true. So, that's true. so we want to work on the background, the substance, because once you get your identity, you have substance to life. Mm -hmm. You can believe you can make it. Mm -hmm. So we want to undergird them with that background stuff mm -hmm. that's going to give them the position to build themselves up. And sometimes it's a morality issue, though, because I've heard well-educated people tell me about things they've done. Uh, that really surprised me. I mean, I heard a guy told me that he was a credit card theft. You know, he was in the credit card theft. And I don't know why he was, but he, that's what he was doing. He was doing it every day. He was stealing credit cards, and then eventually he got caught and he ended up in jail for three and a half years, and that's where he discovered God, or discovered uh, he became saved in jail. Now I've heard people say they do things like they steal bikes, or they steal this, or they steal that, and they get caught. And a lot of those folks are in jail, but then when they come out, Sometimes they realize they need a moral compass, and then that's obviously where church comes in. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, can you give me another good example of someone who's really sort of on the edge, and then you kind of help could guide them in a direction where they could get a legitimate job and, and stay clean, relatively speaking? Me. I do what I do because I was once them. Mm -hmm. And somebody gave me an opportunity or spoke, took me to church, mm -hmm. and the message that was preached to me was a lot of people don't turn their life over to Christ until they get definite in life. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we go out in our own will and we try to take life in our own tones, in our own measures. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them ways we go about life are wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's not until you get broken that you are looking for some help. So once you are broken, uh, we are the church who will be that comp do it mm -hmm. to help you be whole again. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about it is, a lot of times people's problems are brought on by their own self. We are our own worst victims. Mm -hmm. And once we can get out of our own way, we can instill that moral compass, then we can make it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just got to get out of ourselves mm -hmm. to do better. And have good role models in place too, right? Right. Have mm -hmm. role models to help you make it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So you sort of place, you take the place of a family in a sense, because sometimes people do have, like say, family, maybe it's a family issue. I don't know how you were raised, or sometimes people are brought up in single parent households or latchkey children or kids who were displaced or foster kids and so on that didn't really have, say, you know, folks that could guide them and so on. Was, do you think that's a factor in, in that as well? Yes, it is a factor. It, all of us, it's many multitudes of problems that mm -hmm. society or situations can come upon us. And nine times out of ten, not in all cases, mm -hmm. we don't tend to deal with them right because we don't have that structure, that support mechanism like to, a teach, family. to teach mm -hmm. us to deal with those problems in life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of times we don't see it and we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And I, and we don't see or understand it, we deal with it in the wrong manner. Mm -hmm. It's the only time do you find somebody that can see and speak into your light to help you come above that. And then, that's, like I said, this all comes behind choice. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to uh, trouble or problems in life, I try to tell people, when you go down the street, 
and you've been down this street before and you know there's a problem, it's better to walk the other way mm -hmm. than to go down this street. If you recognize yeah, the problem. If you recognize. <laughs> and right. Nine times out of ten, mm -hmm. we do recognize oh, what's going to be down this street. We go down there. Mm -hmm. But because that's the only thing we know, mm -hmm. we stay there. Mm -hmm. It's when you learn to walk the other way that you can learn to do better. It seems to be a very difficult thing to teach people, though, when they get to a habit. Right. <laughs> right. And it comes down to choice. Mm -hmm. Like I say, you know, you, you're not going to do better till you choose to do better. Okay. Let me ask you one simple question. Are minorities, African Americans, uh, Hispanics, more susceptible to that sort of concern in the district than other people that are coming from the general population, or is that necessarily the case? Or what, what are the factors that determine where people end up? Is it is part of it race? Is part of it purely economics? Is part of it um, culture? What is it that the factors that are involved in that? I think it's the foundation mm -hmm. in how you was raised and what you have to support you, to undergird you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may be seen in the black race and the Mexican race because we don't have the foundation as other races. Mm -hmm. So it's not systemic because we don't know how. Mm -hmm. It's about what we've been given to operate on. So the more tools you get, better books and more education, the better we can become. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say we, we as a culture, as a community, to get together, uh, whether the governments, uh, the business leaders, and the church, we can bring them together to bring that foundation to help people through them, them type situations. Okay, well I appreciate your inspiration on that. Again, you're located out in Prince George County, and if people want to get in touch with you, or they want to volunteer, or they have resources that they want to share with you, uh, or they have folks that they want to refer to you, how can they go about doing that? Uh, you can uh, reach us at Greater St. John Church, and our address is 11425 Old Marlboro Pike. Mm -hmm. We're in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Our zip code is 20772. Our telephone number is 301-574-5100. And our outreach ministry is known as the Helping Hands Ministry. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm Minister Norman Hicks. I lead the ministry, so if you, they want to talk to me or ask anything about the Helping Hands Ministry, you will get in contact with me. It's really a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for your inspiration. Really appreciate everyone's involved in this. You got a beautiful van there, so that's, can carry on. Hope to see you again soon. All right, thank you.